guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. Welcome back to the Homestead Kitchen. So today I thought I would walk you through making a very simple classic dessert and that is cranberry apple cobbler. I don't know about you, but I am a fan of all things apple. I don't think there is any sort of apple dessert or baked good or dish of any sort that I don't absolutely love. Uh, it is probably my favorite fruit. And so I am going to take you through the steps of making this very easy recipe. And of course, it starts with some cranberries. I've got about three cups of fresh cranberries here in a saucepan. And I'm going to add in some orange juice. That's going to be the cooking liquid. And we're just going to simmer these for a couple of minutes and let the cranberries begin to soften and sort of pop open. So let me grab a measuring cup. I need two cups of orange juice. And a half a cup of sugar. Now I get <laughs> quite a few questions about these canisters that I have here. Um, people want to know where they can get them. Unfortunately, I would say you'd have to go hunting through antique stores. These canisters that I have here in my kitchen actually belonged to my grandmother, so they're not something that is readily available. So I'm putting in a half a cup of sugar, and I'm just going to start heating these up, bring them to a boil, and then reduce the heat, let them simmer for about two minutes. So my cranberries have been cooking here, and you can see I lost the flannel, got hot. <laughs> Hazard of being this age, I suppose. Now I'm gonna add in a third of a cup of raisins, a third of a cup of plain applesauce, and I'm going to add in two diced apples. And we're just going to let this cook for just a minute and then we will remove it from the heat. And I'm going to start preheating my oven to 400 degrees. Alright, so in my mixing bowl here, I'm going to measure out one and I'm going to measure out one and a third cup of all-purpose flour. Okay. Then I'm going to add in one and a half teaspoon of baking powder. half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a third of a cup of brown sugar. Now 
I'm just going to take my pastry blender here and kind of whisk these together real quick. Okay, now for some butter. I'm going to need five tablespoons of nice cold butter. And you want cold butter because we're going to cut the butter in uh, to create a nice crumbly texture just as though we were making biscuits. So I'm just going to cut the butter into thin pieces to give me a little bit of a head start on uh, cutting it in with the pastry blender. Now I'm going to take my pastry blender and cut in the butter. And this takes a couple minutes. I mean, you could probably do this in a food processor if you wanted to, but I don't know. There's just something sort of satisfying about doing it the old fashioned way. Now another option is if you don't have a pastry blender, you can actually do this with your fingertips and just rub the butter and flour and everything between your fingers and sort of create that crumbly texture uh, that way as well. So that is another option. And then a fourth way that you could do this would be with two knives. You would simply take two knives, two butter knives, and just crisscross them through the mixture, kind of like scissors, and cutting the butter that way. So there's a number of different ways you can, number of different ways that you can do this, and my oven is ready over there. So you basically just do this until you have no pieces of butter that are any bigger than a pea. So we are right about there, I think. All right, so now to add the liquid, I need a third of a cup of milk plus a tablespoon. So just over a third of a cup. And to that, I'm going to add one egg. All right. And we're going to whisk this all together. And then the last ingredient is about a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. going to take my dry mixture here and I'm going to pour in my liquid and I'm just going to stir this until it just comes together in a little bit of a, a kind of crumbly dough just like you're doing biscuits. Now I'm going to bake this cobbler in a cast iron skillet 
and I believe this is a 12 inch skillet. Um, ideally you would want some sort of baking dish that's smaller than a 9 by 13 cake pan um, but bigger than a loaf pan and I don't really have anything in between so for me a cast iron skillet that's about yay big works pretty well so I'm just gonna coat this with butter and I'm just gonna use my hands uh, I'm not afraid of getting butter on my fingers I'm just going to coat the bottom real good, rub it up the sides a little bit, and make sure that it's all nice and coated. Okay, wash my hands. Alright, so now we're going to take the fruit and pour it into the pan. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. kind of spread it out into the pan. Now I'm going to take the cobbler mixture and I'm just going to scoop this into dollops on top. And this is going to go into the oven for 25 minutes. Cranberry apple cobbler has finished baking. It looks and smells absolutely amazing, but we're going to let this sit for just a few minutes to cool down a little bit before we serve it. Because if it is screaming hot, then the scoop of ice cream that you, that you put in the bowl with it is going to instantly melt. So we'll let this cool down for just a couple of minutes and then we'll serve it. Alright you guys, so that is how you make this cranberry apple cobbler. It is absolutely delicious. And I have a printable version of this recipe on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, where you can print it out, you can save the recipe to Pinterest, or however you like to save your recipes. So thanks for joining me here again in the Homestead Kitchen. I will talk to y'all next time.